friends. Today I'm going to be reacting to the My Strange Addiction episode, I'm a Living Doll. If you're new here, this is my react series where I watch documentaries, shows about the fashions that I love and support, and sometimes they're winners and sometimes they're bad. My last episode I watched the Barcroft documentary about the kawaii girl and the goth girl that lived together, which was a really good portrait documentary about different alternative fashions. <sighs> this one's a mess. I mentioned in my last episode that I have a history in documentary filmmaking, that I went to film school, that I've worked as a PA on documentaries. I've been in a few documentaries myself. Interesting backstory, I was approached to be in this and I said F no. Very important thing to know about My Strange Addiction and this episode in particular is that the people that were on it did not know that they were going to be on My Strange Addiction. The production company, which I will not name because I'm afraid of getting in trouble, but uh, Google them and if you ever are approached by them to be in a documentary, I highly suggest that you don't do it because a lot of the documentaries that they make are shockumentaries. They have the narrative of like trying to show their subject as being weird and strange. When I was approached by this company to be in a Lolita series, it was told to me that it was going to be a series of videos and it was documenting the lives of Lolitas, but their working title was I'm a Living Doll. And I was like, no, I can't be a part of anything that says I'm a Living Doll. I don't want Living Doll to be in whatever I'm in at all because I'm not a Living Doll. I had several email conversations with them. I had Skype calls with them and I tried to talk to them about what Lolita fashion is and they were reaching out to other people in the community. At the time I lived in California so they were reaching out to like the LA community and everyone else was pretty much saying the same thing. At no point did they say that it was going to be My Strange Addiction and then unfortunately Emily got involved in it and she is a cosplayer and she also wears she wore Lolita, I'm not sure if she still does but she kind of has her own unique style. They completely manipulated her. So I've already seen this episode, it's been quite a while. Something really important to note, if you are ever approached to be in a documentary, you want to ask where it's going to air, what the series is, like who's backing it, who's involved with it, and then also what their direction is with it. And if at any point they try to coach you into saying something differently, and it's something that you don't stand for or don't believe in, we don't just do it to like, make them happy. You want to stay true to your core, to yourself. And if you think that there's any way that they could manipulate what you're saying, they might do it. For me, when they were interviewing me, anytime I said Lolita fashion, they asked me to repeat it with doll fashion. And I was like, hell no, I'm not going to repeat what I'm saying because what I'm saying is what I mean. If you haven't seen this episode, it has Venus Angelic, a girl named Emily, a guy who wants to be Ken, who I guess like fits into this properly. I'm not really gonna touch on the Ken thing because he kind of seems like he's going along with it and that's what he actually does. I've researched him after this and he does present himself as a living doll. So they kept reaching out to me, they kept trying to get me involved or to get me to recommend people to be involved and I was like, no, 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 not unless you tell me where it's going, what it is, and that there isn't any doll fashion, living doll wordage in it. And so then they kind of stopped talking to me, they gave up obviously, and then when it came out and I realized that it was that production, I was livid. I contacted them several times just asking why, why did they do this, how did they get away with it? And they tried to get me involved with something else and I said no, like, are you kidding me? Not after this. And they tried to reassure me that the other project, which I don't know what that other project ended up being. They tried to show me that it wasn't that and that the whole My Strange Addiction thing, they claimed that they made a documentary and then they couldn't sell it to a company so they sold it to TLC and then they made it into My Strange Addiction. But I feel like they clearly knew from the beginning by the way that they were trying to intertwine Living Doll and coaching people to say Living Doll, that they knew the whole time that that's what they were doing. And I don't see why they would go out and make a production without the funding, without knowing where it was gonna go. Like, 
after it came out, I can't tell you how many times someone has stopped me and said, oh yeah, I know what this is. I saw the Mind Strange Addiction Living Doll episode. You're a living doll, aren't you? Da, da, da. It's literally happened to me. <laughs> So many times I wasn't even in it, but that's just how they now see and perceive Lolita because there's scenes where Emily and Venus and Venus's mom are wearing Lolita and I Want to make it very clear that I do not blame Emily and I do not blame Venus for what happened They were very clearly manipulated. They were misrepresented. They were edited. Let's just watch this This is an inside look to the life of a living doll. Oh she just looks so uncomfortable. I've only been like living doll for just a little over a year now. Some of the measures that I go to to look more like a doll, I eat smaller portions of food and I weigh myself two to three times a day. This is dangerous behavior. This is not good. I accidentally laced one of my corsets too tight and one of my ribs is now pushed in a bit too much. Emily! I don't like what I see. I need the makeup, I need the circle lenses. It's just, I look like poop. I don't think that she actually believes that. I think that they asked her something and she replied with it that way. Yes! Emo Emily! We love an emo queen. I eventually discovered that I really loved Lolita and like Dolly attire. Two for Lolita. 800 for Dolly. So I became a living doll. Notice how when she just said that I became a living doll, it was a voiceover. That's them coaching her and using her sound pieces from things. Everybody was so mad about her keeping her contacts like this. Yes, this is not good. I'm sure she has learned since, but, and this might have just even been a mistake the last minute, but yeah, her contacts, you should keep only one contact in each side and you should have more solution in it than that. If you mix up your eye goo, you can get styes and eye infections. It's not good. You can also get ulcers and risk vision loss. They make my irises look larger, which helps give you the more dolly of eye. You could just hear the like hesitation in her voice, like the more dolly eye. She looks so cute. Those boots are so good. So I have transferred from Emily to Luna. Luna is like my doll name. Again, a voiceover of Luna's my doll name. Luna's her cosplay name, but she probably said Luna's my cosplay name and they said, can you repeat that? But can you say doll? Venus, oh, <laughs> old Venus. Oh my God. London, I am 16 years old and I am a living doll. Guys, she's 16. I love Venus and I used to hate Venus. When Venus was in more into Lolita, and even like more into Dolly stuff, she was very much being controlled by her mom. If you've kept up with her through the years on her YouTube, you'll know that she had to like escape her mom. She's had a rough go of it. I think the reason that Venus really played up the I'm a living doll thing is because she wanted to be popular on YouTube, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But also, her mom was very much a stage mom. Her mom, I'm sure, saw the popularity of all of the other like living dolls and wanted her to gain popularity because of that. Like, saw it as a possibility for her. I'm gonna stop talking and just watch more of it. I can become a famous living doll. Literally, she says, so that she can become a famous living doll. Because she knows, and her mom knows, that living dolls have gained notoriety and gained popularity. My big, big dream is to become as famous as Britney Spears and move to Japan. When I wake up, the first thing I do is study Japanese language. I mean, she did it. Girl did it. She went to Japan and she has over a million subscribers. And then I start my daily facial massage. E <laughs> this became such a meme when this first came out. Is the lightning nice? Because of that, 
When I was 13 years old, I decided to start a YouTube channel. I worked really hard and long hours on my video. You have to admire how much work Venus has put into her YouTube career. And from such a young age too, it's crazy. Like, just let her be a kid, let her have fun. I know, it's just sad watching this now because I know that she was struggling with her mom and that like she had rough times, so I'm just really happy that now she's in a good place and I hope that she was still having fun even though she was working so hard during these years. It is exhausting and it also puts pressure on me but I have learned to manage this. My mom is my best friend but she also is my manager, assistant and teacher. Her teacher? Oh no! Her mom is her manager, her teacher, her best friend. She's like being alienated from the world. Just changed to a business, but it doesn't pay all the bills yet. But I hope that maybe soon we can live from it. It doesn't pay the bills yet, but I hope that soon we can live from it. Classic stage mom. Going job hunting. Today I want to go job hunting, dress more like a doll. This is definitely something that they staged 100%. Hi. This is so staged! They would have had to clear with the restaurant first to film in there. So they would know what's going on and like they probably have an idea of how to act. Like none of this is real. Why is she going to an auto repair place? Come on, come on. There's nothing wrong with wanting to wear Lolita, J fashion, Kawhi fashion, doll fashion wherever but like why would you go apply to somewhere that doesn't have anything to do with it like it would be better if she went if they showed her like applying at boutiques and applying at accessory places or clothing shops but no they have her going to auto repair which like even if she did work there and she was a lolita like you probably have to wear something that you you probably wouldn't want to wear your nice clothes there because you might get dirty even if you're like a receptionist you're still going to be running around and interacting with people and things that are dirty and you want people to like move your body like what if there's an emergency and you have to like also sometimes you have to dress for your job in japan j fashion started being worn on sundays in harajuku as a form of expressionism outside the workplace this is so clear that they're not trying to paint a good picture i am a youtube star you are venus so go venus I'd like to take a moment to reflect on what this documentary is trying to tell us. It's clearly trying to tell us that living dolls are strange and unusual, can't get jobs, want plastic surgery, and then Venus's storyline is, is kind of positive. It's just showing that she's a YouTube star and that she wants to be famous. Like that's, she's kind of got the good storyline. Let's see what happens with Emily now. <laughs> She's gonna meet up with her family. Oh no. Oh no. Her face! Oh no. This is so cringy! What the heck? That's so weird. Why? Like, if she takes her wig off, her hair is all like folded up and like in a net and put away. Like, even if you don't like it, like, don't tell her to take her wig off. Come on. I don't know how much of this is staged, but I don't like it and it's cringy. And the only reason that this is in this is to prove their point that it's strange, it's unusual, it's weird. I personally wouldn't ever wear like Lolita to my family. Like, my immediate family is cool, my extended family is questionable. I wouldn't wear it just because it's like easier to not deal with this. And I am all about being yourself and wearing what you want, but there are certain times when people won't accept it and it's sometimes just easier for you to just not deal with it. <laughs> Uh, and just be around people that do support you and wear it when you're around that, but fight the good fight, Emily. Today, me and my mom are going to this photo studio in London to take my photos for this online contest where you can become uh, the face of a Japanese doll clothing line. This had already happened at the time of this filming. Venus was chosen for Mr. Yan's wife, con I mean model contest for Bodyline. And it's weird because it's for Bodyline, but they showed a picture of Doll Delight, which is a California brand. Most likely due to not having rights to Bodyline images. Also, Doll Delight has a series 
a TV series. I wonder if I could find it and watch it. Would you guys want me to react to the Doll Delight TV series? Let me know. This online model contest is very important to me because it is about... She'd already won it at this point. This is all staged, just so you know. Oh yes! The Always Sunny music. The royalty free Always Sunny music. Into like Dolly fashion. Oh, Ona, saying Lolita. That's the third time it's been said in this video. Can I ask you guys something personal? Yeah. Oh. How far are you guys willing to go to look like a doll? I don't think I can. That was such a coached question. How far are you willing to go to be a living doll? That was definitely one of the producers said, hey, can you say this? Can you approach this with the group? If you are watching this and need a little retail therapy after all the cringe, Check out O Boudoir Dialis new online shop. You can buy low eater fashion and go forth to represent it properly. Thank you, O Boudoir Dialis, for sponsoring this video. You help the low eater community thrive. That's the end of what I could find on YouTube of this episode. I hope that you could see the signs, the flags, that this was a very manipulated, doctored documentary. When you watch documentaries like this, when you see this, you definitely want to think to yourself, what's the story that they're trying to tell? And Venus's story was actually not too bad. It was just that she's a living doll and that she's trying to make it big on YouTube, which is fine. And then Emily, they very much were showing that she's a weirdo. Like every aspect of it was being like, this is weird, this is strange, this is unusual, my family doesn't accept it, I can't get a job. They weren't showing her in a good light, and that's absolutely not her fault. You can tell that they planned these things. Let me know if there's any other TV shows or documentaries or anything that you want me to watch that relates to J fashion, Lolita, Kawhi fashion in both a good light and a bad light. I want to watch it all, I want to react, I want to talk about it and teach you to learn from it, and of course, stay lovely.